All right, here we are in the final match. We've been blessed with being able to get to go first by the magic gods, you know, Ronus, Bantu, LSV. Uh, this hand's pretty keepable, actually. We're going to go turn one, um, seat, drum. Turn two, frogmite, carapace forger. So this hand's actually pretty pretty strong. And hopefully our opponent's not on, you know, mono artifact destruction. Seat Drum, uh, Frogmite, Forger, I think is going to be the plan. I really hope it's not the mirror. I hate the mirror. It basically comes down to who can draw Ancient Grudge and Gorilla Shaman, and we're missing Ancient Grudge. No! <laughs> okay, maybe it's Boros. <laughs> maybe it's Boros. So we'll play out our other seat. Play our Frogmite. And then we'll play the Carapace Forger. For the next turn, we can play Mirror Enforcer and Atog. I wonder if they will try and bolt my Frogmite or Galvanic Blast my Frogmite. The answer is no. So yeah, it could be Affinity or it could be Kuldatha. We really don't know yet. If they go for the bolt, I'm, it could still be. It could, I mean, it could still be either technically. Um, I don't think our plan really changes a whole bunch. The absolute worst thing that they could do here is White Source Journey if they're on the Boros plan. And if they're on Affinity and they didn't play a one drop, like the, they might just play a Prophetic Prism or something, and in which case we're actually in pretty good shape. Okay, it is Boros, and they're actually on a very slow hand here. And that's awesome. And then we can't we can't play the Atog, so we'll just attack. Next turn we'll play the Atog and the Enforcer. Yeah, getting rid of our frog was actually really good for them because we they you know blanked one of our affinity. Yeah, they they basically killed off a mana source for us because we also like couldn't drum either. And then they're gonna bring in their gorilla shamans, which is kind of scary. Um but we just have to hope that robots are are better <laughs> uh and th like i said they're on a pretty slow start like if they just play the furnace again and then tap out for something stupid like we're, we're fine they, they can't galvanic blast us they can't bolt us they would have to have journey to nowhere and that only deals with one of our threats so i'm really not that that concerned quite yet uh if they do have journey to nowhere i hope they journey my carapace forger so i can keep my mirror enforcer around for the other mirror enforcer and for the atog But I think we're in pretty good shape here. And they're going to probably take... It looks like they're tanking pretty hard on how to deal with our board. Um, the Boros list doesn't do so well. Yep, there's the journey. The Boros list doesn't do as well versus uh, the 4-4s. Four but our opponent's removal is lined up pretty nicely. And they know to go for the Mirror Enforcer. But fortunately with backup. So uh, depending what we draw, I think we're just going to play the other Enforcer. Honestly, it represents more damage. Because I don't want to stack anything to Atog. I mean, okay. I mean, we're I, I'm content to just keep playing Mirror Enforcers till the cows come home. Eventually, one of them's going to stick because this list only runs maybe two or three journeys. And like I said previously, they can't bolt us or anything. Uh, and even if they like Battle Screech here, I'm not really that concerned because I'll just eat both of the creatures. Like they their creatures don't line up very well against ours. It looks like a, yeah, this looks like Battle Screech. A-OK. -okay. Tree of Tails is a pretty decent draw. Let's swing eight. Like, if they don't block, they're actually in pretty bad shape also. And if they do block, it's also bad. So they might have another Battle Screech in hand. But we just have two more. 
threats here. So they can't become the monarch. We actually don't know if they're on tokens or monarch quite yet, but they can't really become the monarch. And I don't know if tapping out for Battle Screech is really that good. They would have to play two more white creatures. So if they tap out for Battle Screech and then cast the Battle Screech out of their graveyard, that would be, you know, at least Fogos for another turn. But that's not really a winning game on their end. We've just been fortunate to rip, you know, two extra mirror enforcers. Because we've had no card draw this game, no thought cast, no prisms, no uh, Icar Wellsprings, no Perilous Researches. We've really just been getting there on the fact that Affinity can play two and three mana four fours and, you know, our opponent cannot. So they're probably considering the removal options right now. Um, I think Atog is probably the least of their worries. Like, certainly it represents a good deal of damage, but I have to sacrifice artifacts to use it, and I might not be willing to do so right now. So I think they're probably considering between playing another Battle Screech or maybe playing another Journey to Nowhere. And then if they're going to play the other Journey to Nowhere, they're probably thinking about which creature they want to journey. Um, and if they journey to Nowhere, we're actually still in pretty good shape because we have three attackers. And if they double journey, then they just lose the game. Uh, no, no, they don't just lose the game. They'll take four from a Mirror Enforcer and probably chump the Atog. And I'm not going to uh, you know, sacrifice anything to Atog. So my opponent's probably just considering their lions. Maybe if they're on Monarch, they also have the Monarch uh, card in hand, Power Sentinels. They play an Ancient Den. So we know, okay, and then a Glint Hawk. So the Glint Hawk is going to probably bounce the Ancient Den back to hand, and then they can core Skyfisher. Um, but I don't know what they would Skyfisher, and then they'll probably tap out for the Battle Screech, I think is the line my opponent might be taking here. But... They're being very slow about it, so they're obviously considering their options very carefully, um, as they should be, of course. Okay, they are on tokens, so that's actually pretty pretty bad for us uh, on this board. Uh, overall, it's actually very good because that means Electricery is a much more live card. And also, if I top deck a fling, I just win the game. So there's also that to consider. And, you know, I am going to be killing off a bunch of their stuff. So, like, now what are they going to return to their hand? The Windscarred Crag? Certainly not the Boros Garrison. Maybe one of the tokens? Yeah, they returned a goblin token. I I think there is a consideration for bouncing the Okay, and there's the flashback on that. But now I feel I feel fine about this match still. They have to block everything. Perilous research. I'm actually gonna go ahead and fire that off. And I'm going to sacrifice this uh tapped land and then I wonder if it's worth it to go ahead and suit up one of my creatures I guess not I guess we could trade it with one of the goblins if yeah, if they if they block to survive yeah, that'd be pretty bad. So I do want to leave back a blocker. That's not what they're doing, though. They're going to put one on everything. Mm -hmm. Very good for me. And they, only, they have three cards in their hand. Granted, I have none, but my board's just so much better. And there's no way they can rally flashback rally this turn. They only have three mana out. And they used one of it to so I know and I know one of the cards in their hand is, is an ancient den. So they have three cards plus an ancient den in their hand. So they have they have ancient den and then two other cards. And yeah, they can't they can't attack me here. They can't win. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just hold that. There's no reason to play it. And then I'm going to attack with... I guess I could go ahead and attack with the Flare Husk. Like, it can't, it can't block, and if and they won't, they're, they're not incentivized to block it. Like if, like, if they block it and eat it, they take so much extra damage. Right. So, yeah, this is definitely, definitely worth...
They still can't Galvanic Blast me. They have no artifacts in play. Looks like they might, yeah, they might try and kill that off fine. And then they have to block Atog with the other one. Yeah. So we'll make it so that we kill off this, um, this core Skyfisher, I think. Because I think it's a little bit, you know, it has three toughness, so it's a little better. Having a Galvanic Blaster would be so good because I could blow out this block. Are they thinking about rallying the peasants here? To kill to kill my Atog? Oh no, they're just galvanic blasting that. That's fine. Yeah, if they rally, they just destroyed their creature from everything, so then they can still do good work in this game. Yeah, you're right. So now they have they're gonna have two cards plus the uh, card we already knew about, the Ancient Den. And now all of our attacks are lethal. So, like, worst case scenario is that they play out another Battle Screech that I have to fight through. But even that, okay, Icar Wellspring, sure. I guess they could also have the Goblins. So, two unknown cards in hand now because they played the Ancient Den. All right, and they go ahead and scoop it up. So we're going to game two. We definitely want to bring in Electricery. We, I think we don't want Croc Clan Shaman. We do want Ray of Revelation. Uh, we don't want Gorilla Shaman. We don't really care about Dispel. Hydro Blast doesn't seem amazing. Uh, and then I think we take out a Research and a Wellspring. Like I think that can, I think this is good. kind of funny that my two favorite decks here in the finals they're gonna bring in gorilla shaman and we're just gonna to have to hope that we have a hand that lines up okay against that uh you know dark seal citadels spring leaf drums things like that so we are gonna be on the draw we do have an electricery we do have a drum so I think that this hand is keepable. So, uh, and we are kind of banking on drawing another land, but it's really hard to not play Furnace Drum, keeping Electricery and Galvanic Blast against this deck. And we're on the draw, so we have a chance to see a couple of lands. I've kept a greedy one lander, but I think it's okay. And then we and we draw Frogmite, so everything all is well with the world now. We really want to draw another land, but next turn, worst case, we'll go Star, and then the turn after, we'll go Frogmite Thoughtcast. And they don't have a turn two play, so that's perfect. Or, yeah, they don't even have like a bolt or anything. So really, the, the ideal top deck here would be a land. We draw a star. It's okay, we'll play the star. Next turn, we can play star, frog, might, thought, cast. If they have a gorilla shaman, we have to hope to draw a land. But I think that this hand has a pretty good chance of, of winning still, even though it's a little bit slower. Please don't be a gorilla. Okay, phew. Thraven Inspector, that's A-OK. -okay. All right, Thraven Inspector, Icar, Icar Wellspring is not what I'm afraid of. So we're, we're still in pretty good shape. A land would still be a very good draw here. And we do. We get, like, probably the perfect land. So now we have some options. Now we'll go the land. We'll definitely play Frogmite. And we can actually... Still thought cast, and we'll crack the chromatic star for a mana. And now we might just play Atog, but no, I think it's better to play the Forger. And then we'll pass the old turn. And now I'm feeling pretty, especially with this other Darksteel Citadel, we, I don't think we can lose to Gorilla Shaman any longer. So next turn we'll go Citadel, um, and then we'll play Star Atog. And they, can't, they do have Galvanic Blast now. They have three artifacts in play. 
So we just sort of have to hope to navigate the fact that their deck is a little bit slower. And if they attack here, I mean, I think I, I block because if they have a bolt, it's a, it's a you know, 1.5 for one. And if they have Core Skyfisher and they just get to, you know, get a free hit and then they get to Core Skyfisher that back to their hand, that's, you know, a little worse. So if this eats a bolt, it eats a bolt. But I, I feel like blocking that was correct. I think that was fine. Unfortunate, but fine. And now here's the core Skyfisher, which we can Galvanic Blast. It's going to return the Wellspring. We draw a Tree of Tails. So I think what we'll do is we'll still play the Citadel. We'll play the Atog. We'll play the star. We'll go ahead and Galvanic Blast this main phase, and then we'll attack for two. Now we have a free pump for our ATOG. And granted, our hand is not really the best, but if we draw a fling, I think we just win. So I think we're in pretty good shape, and we're also in very good shape against... Um, Either of the token spells, because we do have the electricery in our hand. And this deck might be playing Prismatic Strands, which is something else that we need to consider. Um, so maybe we should never, you know, try and go all in against three open mana. Radiant Fountain's pretty good. It nullifies our Frogmite attack. But I'm really hoping... And they, can't, they cannot tap out here for the, uh, the birds, which is pretty good. Because they don't have two white sources, so now maybe they're considering great, uh, you know, casting the Kuldatha Rebirth or something else for three mana. Oblivion Ring, okay. So Oblivion Ring will exile the Atog. So now I'm really glad we brought in Rare Revelation if they brought in Oblivion Ring. So now we might be in a spot. Especially if they kill off this Frogmite, that'd be pretty bad. See that the sign out is good because that means I can safely cycle this uh, Chromatic Star. And I'm actually going to cycle it for a blue, just in case I draw a Gear Seeker Serpent. Draw another Frogmite. They have a bolt for it. We'll play out our other drum. We still have some outs, though. We still have some outs. Still have some outs. Things are starting to look a little bad, though. Ideally, they'll just cycle this clue. That would be the best. But they have Kuldatha Rebirth, which is actually also fine, because I'm just going to, like, trickery end of turn. What do you think about electricery here, Aaron? Do you think that's correct? Yeah, that's fair. And now, like, electricering is much worse, so. Sure. I can, I can agree with that. And let's really hope we top deck. Uh... Okay, well, there's Fling. So now we just either need another Atog, or we need to draw one of our, um, uh, our artif enchantment removal spells. I keep saying artifacts. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and pass. You're right. And now they, you know, now they do have five mana, 
Maybe they are trying to set up for a big rally turn, or maybe this will be another Koldatha rebirth, in which case I'll be glad I waited and held onto this electricery. I mean, I'll just take two here. I still have to be careful for prismatic strands, though. There's another Kuldatha rebirth. Yeah. Right, because now they only have two mana available. I think I can still afford to wait. Oh, I see what you mean. Right. So yeah, let's go ahead and, and deal with the, these cards. And we'll go ahead and attack. And we've taken away a big part of their clock, but we really need to draw another ATOG or get that ATOG back. This could be a bolt on my Frogmite. Nope. Just cycling. We, we do have card draw spells, too. We still have three Thought Casts and a Perilous Research left, plus our, prisma plus our um, Prismatic... Uh, what is it called? Prophetic Prism, not Prismatic. Pr not Prismatic Prism, Prophetic Prism. See, I think we just hope to get lucky on a top deck. We got a bunch of cards that are still live. I'm hoping we can just ATOG fling for the win. And I'm okay trading licks here. Although their life gain is much better. So, and then they have another Glint Hawk. They have to bounce the Great Furnace. Thought cast, awesome. Hey, Atog. Um, so how do I want to play this? I definitely can't do it into three open mana. But I think I can play Atog. And I'll leave up red red. And if they ever tap out, who boy. This is a pretty exciting little game. Maybe I'm playing it too safe around Prismatic Strands, but I think that that card is so popular now. Yeah. You also just represent a clock with one clock to attack with it, and he has to either take that damage or block. Right. So, I mean... I think I could also Galvanic Blast one of these birds and, you know, sort of test the waters. Do you want to save the bird? And if they do and it's in the yard, in that case, I can maybe play around it a little bit better. I think I will try and Galvanic. This, to me, means they must have it. But they... Yeah, I think I, I, think I blast one of the birds... That's true. I don't know. It only takes one turn for me to like get in with Atog. But what I can do is I can now what I can do. Okay, well now I just win the game, right? They tap out. But I can do it on my turn. Because, yeah, that'll be...
I mean, it's a lot of damage. There's no point in sacking it now, even. And I just go for it, right? Yeah, I have to. Yeah. I'm gonna wait for this to do two damage first though. All right. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. So yeah. Right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. Load all our mana. Sacrifice the whole kit and caboodle. So this is something you should always do with ATOG. You always want to let the ability resolve before you keep going. Um, just to play around burn spells or... Uh, removal spells so that you don't put everything on the stack and then your atog dies like that's really really sad and we have exactsies wow all right cool Our opponent sent us a message. They said GG. We'll send it on back. And uh, Aaron, what what was my record that league? That was I think that was a I think that was my pretty sick five zero. Yeah. Is it there yet? It's not there yet. All right. Well, every, thanks for everyone for joining me. Um, I know Aaron and I had a blast. Love Affinity. Uh, happy we did so well with it. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time on The Adrian Show.